Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to be taking a look at God Phaser as used in a small bass house track. Let's take a look at the example. All right, it's about a minute long. Let's just listen to it and listen for how you think all the processing was done. What did I use? Here we go. All right, so that's what we've got to work with. Still working a bit on the mix, as is usual for me. Want to try and get that kick to come through a bit clearer, but we have a very interesting bass sound right here, and it uses a lot of the ideas that we've talked before on this channel about. So let's listen to this part right here in particular, and there are a couple moves that sort of make it work the way that it does. In particular, there are three really important automations. First, we have two God phasers, and those are being mixed in over time. Uh, I guess that's one and two, and the third one is this reverb that we are bringing in and out. So when the reverb is high, it sounds like it's further away. And when it's low, it sounds like it's closer. And right here, it's all the way down. And then we've got some filters opening up, some stuff happening inside some EQ. That's what all this other stuff is, for the most part. And let's just go ahead and look at this, and let's go over to where it's in full swing. So everything's on right here, and let's take a closer look at this bass line. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn these drums off, turn off the auto scroll, more drums, and I'm going to turn off the sub bass and the Atmos, and just look here at the bass. So right now, we have only the bass playing. And... Let's take a look real quick at what the God phasers do for us. We're going to start with these. These are basically chorus filters, phasers, flangers, kind of like an all-in-one unit. And let's go, let's take the first one off, just hear what it sounds like without it. And then with it back on. So it still sounds pretty cool. Let's do the same. Let's take the second one off and hear that. And now let's take them both off. So this is extremely useful as a sound. And when you have effects that you could toss on, and by simply turning that effect on and off, you can get super different sounds. That provides just an incredibly useful musical tool. We can make our sound sound as if it's alive. I picture almost a a monster or something chasing me down and this is the sound that it makes so let's go ahead and what i think is really helpful is to sort of turn everything off turn them all one by one on and just hear what each one brings to the table uh, because it sounds like a really complicated sound and the effect stack is uh pretty intimidating and there's a patcher at the end because i ran out of room <laughs> on here but first let's just start by hearing our our direct sound so what am i feeding this thing how crazy is it really so it's just a saw wave with a filter on it with some resonance that's it it's all that's coming in here you could use a, a bunch of different plugins to do this the filter automation is this and i already sort of had an idea of the line that i wanted it's this uh, descending line bum, 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 bum. that thing and then I already had an idea of the filter shape that I wanted as well. So this is a wow, 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 wow. That's what's going on here. So this adds that extra rhythm, even though I didn't write it in. 
And this, the filter inside of the synth I'm using, I'm using a Harmer, is it is not quite sharp, meaning I could turn the cutoff all the way down. And a lot of the times the low end is still there. And when the filter closes, it doesn't close necessarily all that tightly. And so I deliberately left it a bit open because later I'm really gonna clean it up with a another filter that's a lot more precise. Like the shape I draw is the shape I'll get. And so I wanted a little more wiggle room, so I left it a little bit open at the end. It actually didn't close all the way. All right, so let's go ahead, let's move on. So let's add our first effect. This is a God Phaser. I didn't actually add this second though. I actually went straight for a Wave Shaper. So this is a Wave Shaper. I already knew I wanted something beefy and low and big. And so I said, hey, you know, let's blow this thing up. We've got our basic input, let's make it huge. And that's all that this does. Now that I've got this, I've got this overly bright, just super blown out thing. There's a lot of frequencies content to work with. Now I'm going to look for the God Phaser. So I grabbed the God Phaser and with this kind of stuff, I, I'm kind of like whatever sounds cool, you know? So I went preset surfing and I'm actually grabbing this, this uh, God Phaser in particular because their presets are just super well thought out. Like there's just a bunch of really great presets and I like to preset surf for stuff like this. So I settled on Cadenza. Didn't really give much of a thought to what's going on inside. I just wanted something that was going to tone it back. And whatever did that was the one I was going to run with. And so this is what I end up getting. Let's turn it on. So what this does, and I have a slide note right there that I actually need to change. I changed it in the other patterns, but not right here. But we get a much, much wider signal. And so I really like that about this one. And the second God Phaser, so I said, let's add another one. Since this one didn't do like a ton, that's also pretty good to have at the beginning of an effect stack because I knew it was going to get crazy. Because after all the effects have been done, this little change at the very beginning will have big impacts later. So I said, hey, I like that it's only subtly changing it, but it's made it like wider and there's a bit more phasing going on. So I decided to add another one. And this one is on the chemical age agent preset. And this one's doing all, all sorts of stuff. And I was like, I, I dig this, whatever this is doing, I like it. I didn't take the time to, to dissect exactly how it was working. I said, I'm just gonna run with this as my output. So this was chemical agent. And that was sort of how I picked the God phasers. And then the rest was automating them in creatively. But after I hit these, I said, it's still pretty bright. So I went through another filter. This is just a filter. And if we just turn this on. And then after this filter, I add, now this is probably the most important filter. This is a free fast low pass. And what it does is it cleans my shape up for me. So when I draw this, it's just gonna be way, way, way more tight. It's gonna follow this automation a lot more. And let's turn it on, cause uh, <laughs> I keep doing that. Now you might go, but you've taken out so much, you know, this doesn't sound particularly good. I've learned just through experience, you generally are gonna wanna be removing things as you go, and then you pump them back up with something. You, you inject another thing into the process, and this lets you get uh, to just really long effect chains that give you a lot of control over your sound. So in this case, I chose to pump it back up with the Maximus, and I chose to bring the mids and the highs back up. <laughs> And you see the lows are being left alone. There's already plenty of that. Next up is our wave shaper. So this is another wave shaper. This is an extremely aggressive shape. And what I'm doing is I'm actually automating it in right here. You see this little hill. And this is just for a musical effect. I wanted the phrase to have a, a harsher note right here. And so if this was on all the time, it would it would sound just like a crazy mess. But because I'm only using it at specific points, it fits really well and adds bite. And I plan to pump this up big time later on in the chain, which you'll hear happen. And so this automation was something that was like very necessary. Next up, we've got our Pro R. This allows me to move the sound back and forth. It's just got a, the big important thing here is the decay time is really short. You can use any reverb, but the decay time has to be short. And you can see right here, it's, it's it's hanging out in the middle. This gives it a sense of space, but I can push it back right here. So it's gonna sound further away right here. If we listen. 
It sounds like it like went backwards and then boom, came forward. And then right there, it, it sort of rings off with this longer verb, and then it comes forward all of a sudden and does the same ring. So it's just a really nice uh, effect to have in your chain. It offers a lot of versatility down the line. So, And with this sort of a sound, I knew I wanted a shorter decay time, and it's really kind of a bit tricky sometimes to get a reverb that provides the reflective timbre that you want. And I wound up going with the Pro R on this one. I actually tried quite a few. So next up, we go through Patcher. And Patcher, I ran out of room, which is why the Patcher exists. And through Patcher, I go through an EQ and a stereo expander. And then I had this super heavily filtered chain. Now the super heavily filtered chain wound up not really doing that much. So you could kind of ignore this of little consequence. Um, but there is a very, very heavily affected chain. But the big thing is I've got a chain that's got a direct signal and or a super filtered but more direct and then i've got a chain that's being affected from the stereo image so this is changing the stereo image and then i automate these both on and off so at different moments they'll have different amounts of control so let me show you what it sounds like just uh without this pass so when i slap this on it's going to go through this eq which is being automated brought into another Maximus and being pumped up, and then going out a Fruity Balance, which is just basically a volume control that I'm automating, and then going through some side chaining. These are both here for side chaining. And then out. So this is the end of the signal chain. We've arrived. And when I play it, this is just like the super filtered path. But what I'm doing is I'm automating these two. So at times, I'll pump this up, Just I'll just br bring the volume up so that this is louder and this has more control than this does. Now, when I switch, you're going to hear this one, if I give them the same amount of volume, uh, just has it's going to have a lot more dominance because th this heavy filter path is not in the way. And then when we mix them in, you won't be able to really hear this at this moment in the track. But if we come over here and we look for the fruity balance controls, which are these two right here, uh, they're mostly sitting at the same. I was experimenting with them changing, but right here we have sort of a dip in one versus the other. And I'm still sort of experimenting with this idea, but that was the general notion of what I was doing there. Say so you could see I'm pulling it back forward and to try and just give it interest, make it sort of fit so it's not just the same repeating phrase the exact same way every single time. That's really boring. And that is the chain, my friends. But what's going on that makes it really interesting and I found to be really novel is the idea of these two god phasers. They played an especially important role in the timbre of the sound because now after all of that, this first one didn't do a whole lot at the beginning. But now when we take it off and then we add it, it makes a big difference to the timbre of the sound. It's way more aggressive and open. And this is extremely useful where before you heard it, this didn't sound like it did a, a ton to the sound initially. But because of our chain, it just compounds through all these effects. And then on our second God Phaser, a similar thing happens. Now this one was already aggressive, so we kind of expected it. But what's interesting is this time, the effect is almost reduced. It doesn't have as large an effect as it initially had. If we take this off. Where before, this just completely changed the timbre of the sound. When we take it on and off, it still has a big impact, but it doesn't alter the sound so much so that it sounds like a totally different sound anymore. It's, it, we, it sounds like a variation of the sound. So that's another sort of thing that's kind of nice about having longer signal chains like this. But hopefully this was insightful. You saw how I grab the things I grab, why I grab them, and just some useful insights on the processing chain you might use. And it's pretty cool because normally to accomplish sounds that are sort of this crazy, I either wind up resampling or I will wind up adding, you know, layers of synths, possibly mixing with samples and a bunch of things. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's just listen to this middle part right here one more time and just see what you can now hear that you may have not heard before.
So there you go. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.